Hello, my name is Myra Stimpson. I'm a London based artist and at the moment, most of the drawings and work that I'm doing are stitched. Um, prior to that, I've done all kinds of things. I've been an artist for a very long time and my career has done exactly what my work's done. It's gone in and out and up and down and round and about, haven't stuck on one track and continued on it. This question really interested me because it made me think about it for, for quite a long time. And I think that I became an artist because nobody stopped me. And what I mean by that is, I'm a, I come from a very ordinary working class family. And in my very ordinary working class family, I was allowed to be what I am. I was allowed to daydream. I was allowed to sit up trees and watch the world go by. I was allowed to spend a lot of time looking at the world and thinking about it. And I was given an awful lot of freedom to play. So I had, um, I've got four brothers and sisters and we played constantly. And for me, that's the whole beginnings of being an artist is to be allowed to develop your creativity at a young age in the way that you need to. That may not suit everybody, but for me, to grow me as an artist, that was the right environment. And also at school, it was a long time ago. I was born in 1961. In those days, nobody really gave you targets or expected you to do anything. You just kind of, I felt we just kind of drifted along in our academic career. And Again, referring back to my parents, I don't remember my mum and dad ever saying to me, have you done your homework ever? It would just not happen. It might, they might have said, have you cleaned your shoes or have you done the washing up? But definitely not, have you done your homework? And I think because I didn't have any pressure on me, the door to being an artist, if you like, never shut. It always remained open. And then I was really lucky because I went to Goldsmiths and Goldsmiths, again, at that time, I don't know what it's like now, but at that time, it left you alone. And so you could, literally, you could um, make a sculpture one day, a film the next, drawings the next. You could sit and do absolutely nothing the day after. You could do anything you wanted. And uh, for me, that was uh, the right environment to, to grow an artist. So that's why I became an artist. That piece of work comes from an interest that I have in how when somebody makes a movement or draws a picture or does handwrite or writes, you can recognize that work as theirs. So again, if we refer back to school, if somebody holds up a picture by somebody, everybody goes, oh, Tracy did that or a piece of writing oh that's Billy's handwriting and it, that notion really interests me that although we've been especially with handwriting though you're taught to write in a particular way you can you can still see something of that person in it it must be to do with like your brain hand coordination and the way your body is put together and so that's interested me for uh, that interested me for quite a while and it coincided with me finding some shopping lists sort of in the on the floor and they really interested me because they were all the, the reason they interested me was because the person that was writing them wasn't really doing it for an audience they would they were they were doing it for themselves and they were so unimportant they didn't bother to keep them in fact I think quite a lot of them probably got lost before they even went into the shop so the point of the shopping list was the act of writing not the bit that was on the shopping list and then from that I managed to get hold of some notebooks that uh, I, my brother-in-law worked in an office and it was quite a new office. It was a, um, a startup company for recruiting people into the tech industries way back in, this was I think two, about 1999, 2000. And even though they were working in this kind of really cutting edge technology, they still had an A4 pad and a pen and they would answer, people would answer the telephone, they'd write all these notes and never look at them again. They just were, it was just about the act of writing was important to them. And so I collected lots of these notebooks 
And in that particular drawing, what I've done is I've traced around every single word, one page at a time and piled them on top of each other. And the reason I traced around the words and didn't go over the words was because I didn't want people to read what was in the notebook. That's it's very difficult if you can read not to read. If you see a word, you so people when I did try it with handwriting, people just um, they were kind of peering at them, trying to decipher what it said. So it would say lunch with Fiona or something. It's not interesting. But what I did find interesting was that when you went, even if you just drew around the words, every single person's notebook was completely different. And and it sometimes it was because of the way they formed the letters. Sometimes because it was the way they spaced the words, the angle of the angle of their writing on the pad, the how much they wrote on the pad. Some people only wrote at the top two lines. It was they were they really interested me. So, in a way, that drawing is a portrait of somebody. That was the, but it's not a portrait of what they look at. It's a portrait of how their brain and hand are connected in some way. The other thing that came out of it was I was really, really careful when I did it not to put myself into it. So I was, I, I always, I had like a, a process that I went through. I did, started with the first page and I went top left to bottom right because they all were writing in English. Um, and I did it really faithfully. However, I couldn't stop myself being in there. So that drawing still looks like one of my drawings, <laughs> even though it also looks very much like the person that wrote it. So that's what that drawing was about. <laughs> okay, so for me, drawing isn't one thing. It's a huge range of different activities. And it might be from, um, I don't know, drawing a plan of how to get somewhere. It might be deciding, you know, what my curtains are going to look like. It might be that I see something that I think is interesting. I'll do a quick sketch of it. So it can be like a very workaday thing, a bit like the A4 notebooks, and I may never, ever look at them again. Or it can be the working out of ideas about something that I want to make. Or it can be the actual finished piece. And also, I, I'm not sure that drawing has to be done with a pen and a pencil on paper. It can be, so at the moment, I'm doing lots of stitching and, and I think they're drawings. They're, de they're definitely not paintings. I don't think of them as embroideries. I think of them as drawings when I'm doing them. Um, and I, I, I've seen things like, you know, people draw with water on the pavement or, and you know, it goes and then, or you can, I don't know, you can draw with a big stick, you can draw with anything. So that's the first thing is drawing can be anything. Secondly, there, there was a point, a point in my career where I didn't, I didn't make art for a little while. I never, ever stopped drawing, never. It, it's, it's really important to me, really important. And the other thing I wanted to say was, have you ever seen the Harry Potter film with, um, where Dumbledore pulls his memories out of his head? and he puts them into a big pot. Well, I think drawing's a bit like that, and it, but it works both ways. It's a bit like trying to pull out what you already know and put it onto a piece of paper or onto a piece of cloth or whatever, but it's also a way of taking something out of the world and putting it into your head if you're really looking at something. So I think that's actually quite a good description of drawing for me. It's really helped me actually. It's it helped me because it's forced me to focus on, on making things. It's given me more time. It's been, um, it's slowed me down, which I'm sure lots of people will say. It's made me think more. Well, it made me open up an Instagram account, <laughs> which I didn't have before. <laughs> There's got three posts now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's actually been quite positive for me in, for the, in that respect. It, ha it certainly hasn't been, in terms of my artwork, it certainly hasn't been a problem. It hasn't made me, I haven't made work about coronavirus, not at all.
that's that's just something that's out there but it has it has allowed me a quietness and a, and time and more opportunities to daydream and less rushing about i like it being quiet outside in the streets be very open minded to the world so try to remain completely interested in everything that's out there don't say no to anything um, i would say make time for doing nothing i would say if i'm really honest i would say don't expect your career to go in one direction and i don't, and i don't just mean in terms of how much sort of gallery space you get I mean actually in terms of what you're making it's not always forwards quite often it goes backwards <laughs> and then if you're lucky it goes forwards again it's not a it's not a straight path you don't pass an exam and become an artist and that's it you're off so it goes like this 